Hey YouTube, this is Mary once again. I'm taking a break from doing some videos from my website. I'm uploading some videos for my Reiki classes. That's why I'm calling myself all dolled up. But anyway, I thought I'd make a, a video for YouTube while I'm up here. I want to talk a little bit about the Great Equalizer. Death is the great equalizer, and we're going through the equalizing time. This country and other countries, uh, first world countries, they'll be going to be equalized with everybody else because this death pandemic, is it doesn't discriminate. So anybody that's alive can die. But even in, in that situation, we cannot be afraid because death is just the beginning. I've said that before, so we will survive. And as far as this being some kind of, I don't know, y'all want to say they did this and they and the government this and that. But we've came through a lot of things that pandemics and just different things that shake our core. I remember in 2000, was it 1999, how people were prepping and we were always going to be the end of the world and we survived that. And then here come 2012, Y2K. So, I mean, yeah, Y2K was 1999 and then we came through with the 2012 situation. So this will pass and not everybody will die because it's, too, it's more survivors of this disease than it is people who have succumbed to it. So... Whatever situation you're in, you will survive. I promise you this. And just just keep your head on tight and do what you're supposed to do. Don't go to large crowds and gatherings. And my one of my nieces, her her husband, you know, he's kind of I don't know. <laughs> he he likes to party. So they all decided to have a big block party, and, and they just, just had a good time. It's kind of like, uh, today we eat and drink and make merry, because tomorrow we die. And you don't have to be like that. Just because you quarantine yourself is not like you're afraid of death, because it's not fun to be sick. I you remember my last video, a uh, couple of videos, I said that I had quarantined myself because I was feeling real bad. The fevers and the aching and my throat and coughing, the dry cough. And I finally got tired enough of it enough to call my doctor and tell him what was going on. And so he, he decided to let me come through one of their drive through facilities. And I drove through the clinic around in the back and they did the swab of my my tongue to see if I had strip or uh, the flu virus. And then they did the coronavirus. And honey, that, that, when they stick that thing down, your, it ain't just a swab in your nose. It's going in your throat and it feels like it's popping back out your eye. And I just, and I'm the one that can take some stuff, but I grabbed the window, uh, the window and I said, ooh, because <laughs> you can't talk with that thing, you know. And she said, just a minute, just a minute. She finally pulled that thing out of my nose. And you're talking about the burning. It was burns now, just talking about it. The burning coming through your eye and your brain. I never snorted cocaine or anything, but I heard they say that the tingling and the burning. And that, I said, ooh, I had to sit there in that parking lot and blow my nose and get my bearing before I could drive back on the freeway going back home. That is no joke. But by the time I got back home, the doctor called me and said I tested positive for strep. And she prescribed some uh, aromycin, some, an some antibiotics. So I'm on that uh, antibiotic right now. But I'm glad I went on and persevered and got that and found out because I knew something was wrong. My temperature would be up to 99 uh, 99.6 some nights and one night it went to 99.9 and I would take Tylenol or acetaminophen to get it back down 
But I just didn't feel like it was corona because I hadn't been around anybody. So, but I did quarantine myself. But I'm glad that it's just strep. But take care of yourself and, and don't neglect other ailments because you can have high blood pressure, something else going on. And just don't be waiting on the corona to come get you because the Grim Reaper, he, he might come with a sickle or a hoe or whatever. But he's coming and you can fight him off. Our sickness is not unto death. So take care of yourself and don't be afraid. Take care of your children. And while we quarantine, just read. Read some of my books. Get get them online um, from Amazon. I'm doing a, a revamp of all of my books because back in 2002 and three, or whenever I published these books, I paid a woman to to add, proofread them. And, and now I'm going back through them and listening to it on the computer where the man is talking, I find a lot of mistakes. So I'm cleaning them up and reprinting them. So, but get the book going home another way. Get the book. I've done Rumors, Don't Believe the Lie. That's a great book. Man, when I listened to that again, I said, oh, we Mary. <laughs> So get get those two books. I've, I've gotten around to uh, re, redoing those books. So during this time where we just don't have that much to do, just read and remember to always go within. The key to your survival comes from within. I wish someone had told me when I was younger what this was, my, the voice of intuition, because I heard it when I was in the third grade. But you know, back then, you just didn't talk to your mother or your parents or your grandmother. You just answered when they asked you something. And this voice that I've heard, the voice of my intuition, is me right now. And I can't, I, it doesn't make sense how me, when I'm in the third grade, can hear my voice the way it sounds right now. So I don't know if it's some kind of time thing where the older Mary is looking out for the younger Mary and telling her, don't do this. Uh, and even I still hear the voice now, but it doesn't sound like a little kid. It sounds like me. I can do something kind of stupid right now, even when I'm driving. So I'm saying, you know, you don't need to turn up in there. And it's my voice right now. So access that voice that you already have and just go with that voice. It's, it's really gut instinct. And if you sit back and be quiet and you'll you remember that, yeah, that's, that's who that is. That's been my guardian angel all the time. Me in the future, looking out for me right now. It's amazing. But we are equipped with a whole lot of stuff that will see us through. The manual. You know how some you don't buy nothing, a car or a camera or whatever. You're looking for the manual to tell you how this thing works. So the manual, you have a manual on the inside in your conscience. And don't be afraid to assess it, okay? I'll talk to you guys later. You'll be okay. I promise. Bye.